Hello, welcome to the final part of the Chaotic Century Tournament portion of Zoe's Battle Legends. Last time we continued with the Chaotic Century Tournament, but now we are down to the last four battles. Today, we are fighting a Geno Breaker and a Psycho Genosaur, Rock and our Storm Tyran. So let's begin. Uh, my advice for this, uh, I don't know, go, go after whoever you think is easiest to take down. For me, that is the Geno Breaker, who is another one of those where, just like the Geno Sword, the Geno Breaker is another one of those like popular Zoids. But I'll be frank with you, I'm not a big fan of the Geno Breaker. Jesus Christ, look at that. Goddamn. That's with two Ultra Z's, by the way. Oh, don't you fucking dare. That kills mine. Alright, that's Geno Breaker. That just leaves Psycho Genosaur. Who is in this nifty little blue and purple color. By the way, yes, the Storm Tyran is, in my opinion, the better version of the uh, the Geno Breaker. And there goes the Psycho Genosaur. Yoink! <laughs> I must go, my people need me. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, and our rank for this, S rank. Yeah, easiest way to grind for points is to just use whatever zone you like, slap three Ultra Z's on them, um, and then just go to town. Alright, Battle 10, Moonbay and the Ultrasaurus. You know, I keep forgetting that she used an Ultrasaurus. Nice wide open area. Yeah, uh, I forget that she used a Geo, Geo, an Ultrasaurus in um, Chaotic Century, but that's also because I haven't seen Chaotic Century in literal years, and I don't intend to change that fact at all. So let's just take down the Ultrasaurus. First blood. So, the Ultrasaurus here is our first instance of a boss Zoid. My advice for them would be to, like, run around in circles, because they tend to be very slow, with a few exceptions. In fact, we'll actually fight one of those exceptions in the next, uh, in the next fight, the fight after this one. But for Zoids like this, run around in circles and wail the sh and wail on them, since they'll never be able to hit you. Of course, the thrusters help, but since we have two Ultra Z's equipped for this one. And there goes the Ultrasaurus. Like so. And bleh. And there we go. That's our first boss zoid. Yeah, boss zoids tend to be very big. They have a lot of weaponry equipped. And they can do a lot of damage. My advice would be me to just run in circles around them. And then just keep wailing on them. That works well for most Zoids, though it is for most of the boss Zoids, though for some of the other boss Zoids, that will be a bit trickier. Ooh, look at that, that's right. All 
Alright, next battle. Battle 11. Hills in the Death Stinger. So you know how I said that the bosses always are like usually really slow? Yeah, the Death Stinger is one of the few exceptions to that. And this is one of the instances where I actually use the Storm Tyram over the Berserk Fury because of the long-range pulse laser rifle here that I have equipped. Allows me to hit more low to the ground zoids like the Death Stinger, or as you saw in the uh, earlier two parts, parts the uh, the Mulga and the Red Horn, as an example, it's something the Berserk Fury struggles with quite a bit. Though Zoids vs. 3 would remedy that by having the B cannons be able to aim downwards. So, so yeah, that's why for instances like the Death Stinger, I prefer to use the likes of the Storm Tyrant here. Let's take a look at the map. We are in an open area, and our opponent is the big scorpion, the Death Stinger. I'm going to say something that's probably going to piss some people off. Uh, I think the Scorpier, the Scor Spear from uh, Zoid's Wild, is a better looking scorpion Zoid than the Death Stinger. I'll just say that right now. <laughs> like, the Scor Spear or the Scorpier from Zoid's Wild actually looks like a scorpion rather than like an attempt to imitate a scorpion which is actually my beef with a lot of the uh, the old school Zoids they don't they tend not to look like the animals they're based on like even the ones that are based on more outdated depictions and in the case of the dinosaur ones that are based on the more outdated depictions if you actually compare them to how those outdated depictions were well depicted yeah, it's like they still don't look anything look like those outdated depictions. In fact, as I've said in one of the earlier parts, most of my favorite Zoids come from the Zoids Wild era. So anyway, so here's the Death Stinger. It scuttles about, it'll try to charge you, it fires lasers, and it has a charged particle cannon. Like so. But again, my advice, run around in circles, and when it tries to do that charge thing, jump out of the way, way so you don't get hit. Alright, the Death Stinger is almost down. Uh, yeah, that's another reason why I prefer to use the Storm Tyrant, because they have a shorter, because, uh, Zoids like the Death Stinger have a shorter turn radius. Ah, damn it. I didn't get to do my thing. And S rank. Alright, final battle for the Chaotic Sentry Tournament. And I'll just leave one more tournament after this. Then we can start the story mode. Gunther Prozen in the Death Sword, the big Mamma Jamma, who uh, got an anniversary kit, interestingly enough. <laughs> yeah, if you ever look up the, uh, the anniversary or advanced Z uh, Death Sword, it, weirdly enough, looks better than the original kit that it's based on. Alright, first, let's take one last look at our Storm Tyran here. Cycle through the colors. Well, one last look before we end up using it in the, uh, the next tournament. Uh, so yeah, so while in the New Century Zero tournament, uh, I primarily stuck to the Berserk Fury, and for the Chaotic Sentry Tournament, I stuck to the Storm Tyran here, with its big meaty claws. For the next tournament, I will be switching between the two, depending on the fight. 
So, uh, so that way you're not just seeing me use one Zoid over the other. Look at all these Zoids. Actually, wait, how many Zoids do I have? Mm -hmm. I have 21 Zoids. Let's fix that. Yeah, let's fix that right now. And now just the Zoid to get. Because I'm boring. Ooh. Yes. There you go. Now then, let's, uh, hold on. Yeah, we'll go with this. Alrighty then. Let's take a look at the map. The Death Soar. Another Zoid I'm not really too keen on, weirdly enough. <laughs> it's like, you'd think the something like the Death Soar would like do it for me, but I think one of the reasons why I'm not really too keen on the Death Soar is this bit right here. Why does it have a little gun here on the tip of its nose? That just, that, that looks hokey as shit. It's like, why? In fact, I'll just say this right now, I think the Zero Grisus is a better version of the Death Soar. And I say this as somebody who hasn't even seen Zoids Wild Zero, but um, I've definitely seen reviews of the Zero Grisus kit. So, and seeing it in motion has told me that uh, the Zero Grisus is the better version of the Death Soar. Oh, the damn thing apparently can fire black holes, like straight up miniature black holes, like goddamn. Alright, one last look. At our nice red and gold storm tyran. And now, let us begin. Alright, Death Soar. My advice, same as with the Ultrasaurs, run around in a circle, holes, and pummel the shit out of them with whatever weaponry you have. Rawr. Like so. Be wary though. Just like the Ultrasaurus, it has a shockwave attack. And if you get too close, it can and will use it on you. And that thing hurts. Well, not so much in the tournament mode, but in the story mode. Yeah. Mm. What the hell's going on out there? Got missiles, it staggers, hears and roars, and there's the. Never mind. Let's see. One more hit. Nope, there we go. And there goes the bloody death sore. And there we go. And with that, that is the end of the Chaotic Sentry Tournament. Our final rank. S rank. You are the Beretta Warrior. That is a cheesy fucking line. But yeah, that is the Chaotic Sentry Tournament. Um... Like I said, uh, I'm not really the biggest fan of Chaotic Century, like, at all. Like, I find it to be an absolute snooze fest. 
it's basically just a lesser version of Gundam, and frankly, I'd rather just watch Gundam instead. And I say this as somebody who doesn't even like Gundam, but, well, aside from, like, five shows, four of which are from the Build series, and the fifth one is G Gundam. But yeah. But, at the very least, with the end of the Chaotic Century tournament, we no longer have to discuss Chaotic Century until the story mode. But that is the end of this part of Zoid's Battle Legends. A short one, but then again, when you have Ultra Z's, two Ultra Z's equipped, these fights go by real quick. Next time on Zoid's Battle Legends, we will start the final tournament and the hardest tournament of the game. Well, I say that, but we have two Ultra Z's. See, so it probably will go by pretty quick. But the final tournament is a bit more relevant to this game, actually. So, next time on Zoid's Battle Legends, we will begin the final tournament of Zoid's Battle Legends. The Saga Tournament, as it's often called. And so, if you enjoyed this part, feel free to like and subscribe. While you're at it, feel free to check out my non-gaming stuff over on Tumblr and Blue Sky. Links will be in the description. And until then, we ride off into the sunset until the next part of Zoid's Battle Legends. Bye.